We often get asked about active connections and how they're handled by the net equalizer. And the answer to this question is fundamental to equalizing and how behavior-based bandwidth shaping works. To illustrate the answer to this question, I've constructed this Excel spreadsheet and linked it to my net equalizer via a method documented in a blog article called Dynamic Near Real-Time Reporting with the Net Equalizer. This allows me to pull bandwidth information off my net equalizer, insert it into, and report on it via Excel. In this case, I've pulled the active connections data as well as total bandwidth in and out. Remember, the net equalizer is a transparent bridge, and when I refresh the spreadsheet like this, I get a current snapshot of the bandwidth data going across the bridge of my net equalizer at this moment in time. So with that, an active connection is a current flow of information between a unique source and destination IP pair, as you see here. A flow back and forth between two IPs would be two connections, one in each direction. Because flows are not continuous, the size of the flow is represented by an 8-second rolling average of bandwidth in bytes per second, which is a good proxy for the amount of bandwidth this connection is currently using. Unlike a router that needs to remember how to route connections and thus keeps connections stateful by maintaining them active over many minutes, even if there's no flow of information, the net equalizer will close a connection once data stops flowing, and the net equalizer no longer considers it an active connection. If information starts flowing later, a new active connection is created at that time. So I think the first thing to notice is how small most connections really are. This is pretty typical. I get almost all flows in the 10 to 1,000 byte per second range. Unless I'm streaming video or doing a large file download, nearly all my connections will be small. In a typical network, 90 plus percent or more of all connections are very small, and these include connections supporting voice over IP, streaming audio, email, web browsing, etc. Now, I'm going to do something pretty interesting here. I've hooked up a button on my spreadsheet that will automatically refresh the data once a second. So what we'll be seeing is what's going across the bridge on an every second basis. Now, notice how dynamic these flows are. It's changing pretty dramatically, and this is particularly interesting because I'm the only active person on this network right now. It's just me. Also, you can see I'm not doing anything but making this video, but yet it's still incredibly dynamic. Why? Well, my computer is doing a lot of things. It might be checking for OS updates, virus updates, I have a few browsers open, and they might be self-updating, etc. There are probably other devices on my network that are connected for one reason or another to the Internet, and they're communicating too. But can you imagine how crazy this would be if there were hundreds or thousands of users on this network actually working on their devices? Yet you should notice that all of these flows are very small, most still in the 10 to 1,000 byte per second range. Also notice how they're changing every second. Things are popping in and out all the time. The number of connections are increasing and decreasing all the time. You can easily see from this how contention can occur and spike in and out in a matter of seconds. This is especially true if people are watching videos or doing large file transfers, which can even happen unknowingly as service updates in the background. To know what this looks like, I've queued up a streaming video, which I'll start now so you can see how this looks. There, highlighted in red, is my video flow. This one video is taking over a thousand times more bandwidth than all my other flows. You can see that it wouldn't take many of these videos to begin clogging my trunk. The effect of a large file download might even be worse. Nevertheless, as these larger streams threaten to saturate my pipe, the net equalizer will shave a little bandwidth off them to make room for hundreds or thousands of smaller flows. It's leverage like that that makes behavior-based bandwidth shaping so powerful. In summary, the net equalizer uses a Robin Hood approach. If the pipe is near saturation, it takes from the rich and gives to the poor. It optimizes for the vast majority of users and flows. It works on an any port, any protocol, or any payload uh, basis, even encrypted flows. There are no policies to build and maintain, no priority schemes to construct, no analysis required. Just 24-7 bandwidth contention management. Thanks for watching.